everyone, it's Ty, your face of Box 43. I'm so excited right now, as you can see, I'm at the Culinary Institute of Virginia, and I am here with this fantabulous chef, Danahy, and he is going to be preparing a dish for us today. But before we get started, I wanted to tell you, or I wanted to give you an opportunity to tell people a little bit more about the program and what goes on here at the Culinary Institute. Absolutely. So, hello everybody. My name is Chef Danahy. I am a uh, classically trained chef, but I'm also a registered dietitian and licensed dietitian nutritionist. So, here at the CIV, we have a new program. It is currently open for new admissions. Well, what this program is, is culinary arts with applied nutrition. So, reaching out to the trends of our industry at this time, gluten-free, vegan, vegetarian, low-fat, low-cholesterol, but full of flavor is really the focus of our program. We want to educate people so that they can not only provide healthy, nutritious food, but also get a, a better depth of knowledge about the produce that we are actually making here on site in our hydroculture manager. So okay. if you want to be a personal chef and you want to put yourself ahead above the other personal chefs that are out there, Say I'm a personal chef that is also a certified dietary manager. If you have a food allergy, I can prepare something for you. Okay. If you have a low salt need, I can take care of that. And you will not be sacrificing any flavor. Wow, that sounds amazing. Doesn't so um, you grow it here, you make it here, you teach the students how to implement it into their lives. It all sounds like a win-win situation. So if someone wants to sign up, is there a website or how can they get more information about the program? Absolutely, come to the Culinary Institute of Virginia's website. We are through ECPI University. You can reach out towards our admissions Department and they will get you connected. Okay. Find out if you're right for the program and get you started along this path. All right, that sounds amazing. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm hungry, so let's go on and start this dish. Time for lunch. <laughs> we're going to be making a big treat today, so can you tell me a little bit more about what we're going to be making today? Absolutely. We have something very simple but very fun in store for you today. Uh, basically, here at the CIV, many of our faculty members are a part of the CSA. The CSA is a community um, uh, encouraged agriculture. So basically, um, a farm, which is a Matta Woman Farm, okay. provided us with some of these certified organic vegetables. Now, this is Romanesco. Wow. Romanesco is something we might call psychedelic broccoli. It's a cross between broccoli and cauliflower. It's in the same family as broccoli and cauliflower. And depending on where you're from, you might call it different names. Okay. Uh, I was I was thinking like you said Roman so for some reason I was thinking Roman romaine lettuce I don't know these reminded me of lettuce a little bit but well, it was discovered it was discovered <laughs> in Italy so you're not far off okay. Roman Romanesco <laughs> absolutely now this is a little bit better than uh, most cruciferous vegetables in my opinion and the reason being when we think about cauliflower and broccoli bitter is often one of the terms mm -hmm. that we think about now this is more sweet and less bitter, more nutty flavored. So it's a wonderful substitution for that. Okay. And of course, being a cruciferous vegetable, it's very good for you. All right. Well, broccoli is actually like my favorite vegetable, so hey. I'm excited to try that. Well, I've stalked you online, so I know that that's the case. <laughs> I want to introduce you to something else. <laughs> okay, but um, before we get started, I hear you have a, a apron or something for me. Can I, I put that I on? I absolutely do. Let's get this going. CIV colors right there. You put that uh, over your head. Oh get my prepared. goodness. I'm official now. <laughs> now I'm now, our program is the Culinary Arts and Applied Nutrition Program. This program is basically our, our approach to meeting the trends of, of our industry. Now, typically, 10, 20 years ago, nobody actually went to a chef and said, how do I cook gluten-free? How do I cook vegan? Now, today, that's a very common question. So this program is going to be targeting nutritional applications. Mm -hmm. So culinary nutrition made for our industry. And that's a big thing. I'm it sure is. you've heard vegan, gluten-free, organic, mm -hmm. probiotics, all of these buzzwords. So learning from a culinary perspective how to apply that into our skill set, into our industry, is really the way to go in order to meet the consumer's need. So we're going to take this tiny little baby squash, okay. and we're going to start preparing this. Now, the recipe will be online. How would you prepare this? Uh, squash is not my thing. No. I have no clue. You can show me, though. But it's adorable, right? <laughs> it is adorable. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing we do to this adorable thing is we cut off its head. See, I wouldn't have known that. I would have probably sliced it down the middle. We're going to do that in just a second. <laughs> so we slice off the edges. Now, after that, we're going to do exactly what Ty said. We're going to cut oh. that right down the middle. Getting that ready. We're going to basically dice this. You can dice this any various way you want. Uh, but the important thing to know for a stir fry is that every ingredient you add has its own cooking time. Okay. So out of curiosity, which would you think would cook first, this or this? That. Actually, this would cook quicker. Okay. So we would put this in first because this is a cruciferous vegetable. It has okay. more fiber to it. Mm -hmm. This has a lot more water content. See all that Absolutely. water yeah. kind of glimmering off of that? So because this is so full of water, it cooks in a shorter amount of time. So as we add things into the stir fry, we add them based on how long it takes to cook. Okay. So the things that we add last, such as herbs, 
or a little bit of diced up green onions, we're gonna add that last and just toss in with it. So okay. it's not gonna take long to cook. Now, carrots typically take the longest to cook because mm -hmm. they're so fibrous, they're so crunchy. Okay. Uh, so in order to get around that, we can slice this thinner. That way it takes less time to cook. Okay. Now, I'm not gonna use the paring knife for that. I'm gonna use the big boy. Mm. Take it like that, find the midpoint, press down, pull. Now we can do anything we want with this, essentially. What I'm gonna do is kinda cut it a little bit at an angle. Cutting it fairly thin. Okay. And all the while, I'm moving back my fingers. That way, as my fingers are back in place, I control the size of the cuts. And then if I want to show off, I can go a little bit faster. Uh-oh. <laughs> I wouldn't try that. I'm scared. <laughs> when you get a stir fry ready, this is a great thing to do because once you do all the prep work, you want to just put it in order of how much it would take to cook. So mm -hmm. this will take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Then comes the carrots, the squash. The rice is actually already cooked, so that doesn't take long. It just okay. kind of heats up. The grains will wilt very quickly. Um, the peppers don't even need to be cooked. They could just be that little addition. So okay. we're gonna add those a little bit last, then we're gonna add in the nutritional yeast and basically dig in. All right. I'm ready for that last part. <laughs> so the cold product's coming in, it's gonna drop the temperature of the oil, okay. drop the temperature of the pan. The pan has to basically rebound. So giving one or two minutes allows for this to begin to cook before we add anything else. Okay. And then we'll keep on going down the mm -hmm. line. Mmm. Now you can eat this raw. It's perfectly delicious, just like broccoli or cauliflower. Chris, like it has, crunchy? It's crunchier okay. than cauliflower, actually, okay. and it's not bitter, so okay. it has that wonderful, nutty, mm -hmm. subtle, sweet crispness to mm -hmm. it. I love Romanesco. I also love that it's called the psychedelic broccoli, because <laughs> the psychedelic broccoli combined with the nooch makes for a very <laughs> hippy dippy show. Okay. Now, if this was a gas burner, it would cook much faster. Uh, the induction burner does take a little bit longer to cook the way we would naturally like to. Okay, slow but steady wins the race. Slow but steady, there we go. <laughs> Especially for anybody trying this for the first time. Stir Definitely. fries are very friendly for the first time cooked because all you have to do is cut things up, throw it into a pan, stir it around, mm -hmm. and it's done within a very short amount of time. It's so ironic that we're cooking stir fry because I just made the comment that I was craving stir fry, and I come in here and we're making stir fry, so it's like you were reading my mind. Or your blog post. <laughs> <laughs> So I consider this healthy fast food because it doesn't take long to cook. Uh, you can put anything in it. You really don't get sick of the stir fry. In fact, it's my next goal to eat stir fries for 60 days straight just so that I can start recording how many different ways that we can throw ingredients together and change the flavor profile of this dish. I usually cook with sesame oil because you know sesame has that wonderful smoky mm -hmm. flavor to it. So we got this in there. Yeah. I'm actually going to make a little bit of room here in the center of the pan so that the next ingredient that's added into it will actually hit the center, which should be the hottest. Okay. So we're gonna take this, remember we arranged this so that the carrots would go down first. Mm -hmm. We're gonna put that right in there. Yeah. There we go. Again, we're gonna wait a couple minutes, allow that to come back to its temperature. Mm -hmm. two minutes. Now following the recipe for this makes about two portions, or one okay. very nutritious, heavy portion of a stir fry for one person who is all about their vegetables. All right. You can serve this on a bed of pasta, on some rice, however you'd like, but we just mixed our rice right into it, mm -hmm. so we're not losing anything. Mm -hmm. And just as a little bit of presentation, take a tiny bit of this nutritional yeast. The nooch. The nooch. Right, that looks absolutely fantabulous. As the first time trying Romanesco or nutritional yeast. Yes, dun dun dun, the moment of truth. Close up. <laughs> I want to get a lot of these vegetables in there. Mm. That's really good. So much flavor. Everything's really crispy and crunchy. Mm. This is good. You guys should try some. <laughs> guys. For you watching, I'm going to post this recipe online right here on HRC. 
and I'm going to finish eating this meal. But first, thank you for having me. Thank you for the entire Culinary Institute of Virginia for hosting me. Thank you for watching me right now. Remember to keep up with me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm always your connection to everything happening in Hampton Roads. Until next time, I'm Ty Lorenzo, your face of Fox 43. Now let's dig in. <laughs>